My fiancé joked during dinner that she's glad my late wife got hit by a car since it meant getting to meet me, and now my kids are horrified that I'm planning to make this woman their stepmom. So, I, 43M, have two children with my late wife, Kayla, Sam, 21M, and Liz, 16F. Kayla passed away when she was 37, and our kids were 15 and 10. I won't give specifics about how she passed, but she was struck by a drunk driver when she was on her way home from work. She really was the love of my life, and to say that her passing hit our family hard would be an understatement. I promised myself that if I got back into the dating game, I wouldn't date anyone for at least a couple of years for the sake of my kids. Three years after my wife's passing, I met my now fiancé, whom we'll call Amanda, 41F. Things went slowly, and I didn't introduce her to my kids until we had been dating for about a year. Now, we've been together for three years and are engaged. Amanda and my kids have always had a good relationship. Neither of my kids is super close to her, but they have always been friendly and welcoming. Amanda has never overstepped any boundaries my kids have, like trying to replace their mother. At the beginning of Amanda and my relationship, she was a bit insecure about the fact that I was a widower. During the first few months of our dating, she would constantly ask things like, if Kayla had never passed, would I still be with her right now? I always kept my answers brief and told her that I didn't like thinking about the what ifs and that she was the one I was dating now and that was what mattered. Eventually, she stopped making these comments, and I stopped worrying about it. Now to the issue. My parents were hosting a family dinner to celebrate my fiancé and my engagement. It was my mom and dad, my late wife's sister and her husband, Sam and Liz, and me and Amanda. Dinner was going well, we were all making small talk and discussing wedding plans. About halfway through dinner, my mom made a comment about how she was so happy I was able to find the spark I had with Kayla and someone else. I don't think anybody really paid much attention to the comment, but then Amanda laughed and said, I'm happy she's dead, otherwise, I would have never gotten him to myself. The tone of the dinner immediately shifted, and everyone got extremely tense, especially my kids. Amanda noticed the shift and started awkwardly laughing, trying to play off her comment as a joke. I was honestly just frozen, as that was the first time she had made a comment like that. My kids looked disgusted, and Liz got up and walked out to the car. Sam waited a bit longer, seemingly wanting me to say something, but I was still in shock about what Amanda had said. To make a long story about the dinner short, it was kind of ruined, so I said my goodbyes to everyone, grabbed my fiancé, and we all drove home. My daughter hasn't spoken to me or Amanda since, and it's been three days. I got tired of it and pulled my son aside to ask him what I should do. He said something along the lines of, I'm a grown man and don't care who another grown man marries, but I don't want a woman who speaks like that about our mother around my sister. Sam's comment stuck with me, and now I'm considering calling off the engagement entirely. She's never made comments like this before, but I'm worried if I let it slide this one time, it will become more frequent and affect my daughter. I need some advice from outside perspectives and just want to do right by my kids. Update 1. I promised I would update everyone after I had talked to my kids, so here is the update. It's kind of long, so I hope that doesn't go against the rules of this community. I'm also going to use this update to clarify some of the questions people were asking in the comments. Did my fiancé apologize to anyone at the dinner party? No, she didn't. I honestly don't think it even registered or has registered to her that what she said was wrong. Does my fiancé have social anxiety? Not to my knowledge, no. In all the time I've known her, she's never shown any signs of social anxiety and doesn't have a history of it. Now for the update. At around 5.30 last night, my fiancé left for work. She works nights most days of the week, so I was able to call my son and ask if he could come over so I could talk to him and his sister. He goes to our local college and lives in an apartment near his school. When he started college, he wanted to move out but also wanted to stay close to us, so he settled on an apartment a few blocks away from the college. He came over, and I called him and his sister into the living room to talk with both of them. When they were seated, I told them point blank that I didn't think the wedding was happening anymore, and that the comment she made was unacceptable. I then apologized to them. I told them I was sorry for not saying anything for so long and letting the tension thicken in our home. I told my daughter that I understood why she hasn't spoken to me, and that I was sorry for allowing her to think that I was even remotely okay with what was said. I felt pretty spineless after we had gotten back from dinner that night, so I wanted to do everything in my power to make it right with my kids during the conversation. My daughter told me that she felt disgusted at the comment Amanda made, and even more so when I didn't defend her mother. She then told me that in the past two years that she's known Amanda, she felt like she's been gradually trying to push her and Sam away from me. One of the examples Liz gave was when my son moved out. He moved out when he was about to start his sophomore year of college, and when he mentioned the idea of moving out, Amanda was the one who took that and ran with it. According to Liz, Amanda was the one encouraging Sam the most to move out. To be clear, I was never against Sam moving out, but I made it clear to him that he was welcome to live at home during his college years and even after until he found where he wanted to be. I asked Sam if he felt pushed out by Amanda and if that's why he moved out. He said he hadn't felt pushed out before he mentioned he wanted to move, but after he put it out there, my fiancé kept pushing for him to move out. Liz cut in and said that every time she brings up college, Amanda keeps encouraging her to go out of state. Liz doesn't plan on going out of state and has been open about wanting to attend the college Sam is attending right now. Liz said she feels like Amanda is waiting until she graduates high school and goes to college so she can move out. A lot of the comments were right about the subtle comments eventually turning into Amanda wanting my kids pushed away from me. Liz said she was scared that by the time I eventually noticed the way Amanda was acting, too big of a wedge would have already been driven between me and them. 
I told my kids that I'm sorry it's taken me this long to notice, and that I was also sorry they've been walking on eggshells for so long. I hugged my kids and told them that no matter what, they are my top priority, not Amanda or anybody else. A lot of comments pointed out that even though my son has grown, he still needs his father, and I made sure to let my son know that I will always be there for him and his sister even when they are well grown. The entire conversation lasted about two hours, we covered a lot of the bases we wanted to, and it got emotional on all sides. In short, Amanda and I are done. I've made it a point to tell my kids that none of this situation is their fault, and that Amanda is the grown woman who said what she said. My kids and I are okay right now, but they aren't 100% with me and probably won't be for a while. I'm completely fine with that and just want my kids to be comfortable in their own home. Amanda has tomorrow off from work, so I plan on talking to her then. I also plan on calling my mother to ask her why she thought it was okay to even bring up Kayla at the dinner. I don't want my daughter here when it all goes down, so she's staying tonight and tomorrow night with Sam. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm not super happy about the outcome with Amanda, but I would rather have my kids happy and healthy than have a wife. Thank you everyone for the advice and the harsh words. Update 2. Before I get to the update, I made the call to my mom to let her know about the situation. A lot of the comments advised me not to bash my mom for the comment she made. Now, thinking back on the situation with a clear mind, the comment my mother made towards Amanda was most definitely a compliment. This was confirmed during the call I had with her. My mother, bless her heart, felt extremely guilty for the entire situation. She fully believed the situation stemmed from her one comment. I assured her that none of this was her fault and that I never blamed her for any of it. We talked a bit more before I let her go. The call ended at about 9.15 am, and I was left waiting for Amanda to wake up. She woke up around 10.30 am, and I didn't want to ambush her right after she woke up, so I waited until about 11 am to sit her down and talk. A lot of people in the comments suggested secretly recording the whole thing. I thought that was extremely smart, so I had my phone set to record in my back pocket the entire time. I didn't think she'd try to do anything drastic, but I would rather be safe than sorry. The talk with her went about as well as anyone could imagine, which is to say not at all. I told her I needed to talk with her and that it was serious, so we sat in the living room. When we were seated, I began unloading about the comment she made about Kayla at my parents' house, how it made my kids feel, how it made me feel, her lack of an apology or any sort of acknowledgement of what she said, and so on. I told her I expected her to apologize to my parents, my in-laws, and most importantly, my kids. During the entire time I was talking, she didn't show any emotion other than slightly widening her eyes. After I spoke my truth, she straight up asked, so if I apologize to everyone, we'll go back to normal? I told her point blank, no. I explained that the comment she made at dinner was not the extent of my problems with her. I then told her that I knew she had heavily pressured Sam to move out when he wasn't even sure if he wanted to at that point in time, and that I also knew she was now trying to do the same with Liz. I did my absolute best to leave my kids out of the situation, but told Amanda that the way my kids described her treatment towards them was the main reason I don't see a future with her anymore. Amanda was stone-faced until I told her we were done. I think that's when the panic set in for her. She kept saying she would apologize to everyone and make it right with my kids, etc. I told her that while I would certainly appreciate her apologizing, we were still done either way. She was full on crying at this point and asked me, why wasn't I willing to try and fix our relationship? I told her that even though I loved her, and I will be honest, I still love her very much, I was not willing to take another chance of my kids being hurt the way they were. I was frustrated and shot back at her, asking, why were you trying to push my kids out of their own home? Her answer was completely unexpected, but many of you guessed correctly about Amanda's true nature. Amanda responded with, well, I didn't know you expected me to house somebody else's kids for the rest of my life. I immediately saw red, and after about a minute, I told her to get out. I told her that my kids can go wherever they damn well please, especially in the house that I own and pay for. She tried to retaliate, but in the end, she packed a few bags and went to stay with one of her friends. I emailed a copy of the phone recording to myself. The talk only lasted about 25 minutes, not nearly as long as the talk I had with my kids. So if anything ends up coming from the conversation, I have all I need to keep my name clear. I texted my kids to let them know that Amanda is out of the house for good and that they are welcome to come home anytime. I also let my son know that if he wants to, he is more than welcome to move back in completely. My daughter is coming back from her brother's place in the afternoon, and I still have phone calls to make to my parents and in-laws to apologize for this mess of a situation. Amanda is out of my house but keeps blowing up my phone, wanting us to try to work things out. I'll let her come by in the next few days so she can collect the rest of her stuff, but she is not welcome to live here again. I'll be honest and say that I am a bit devastated. Despite everything Amanda did, I still love her, and I probably won't stop loving her for a while. But I'll be okay. Right now, I just want to focus on the family that needs me and use this situation as an opportunity to bond more with my kids. Again, thank you to everyone who helped me in the comments. Update 3. Wow, I can't believe it's been almost a year since everything went down, and my posts still have so much traction. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who's been engaged in my story, and an even bigger thank you to those who shared their own stories and advice when I was between a rock and a hard place. Everything that happened honestly feels like a lifetime ago, which has reminded me that I'm getting older as I'm now 44, ha ha. Liz turned 17 a few months ago, and Sam is about to be 22. Life has honestly been pretty peaceful since I broke things off with Amanda. She came by, picked up her things, and gave me back the ring, which I didn't want back, but she gave it to me anyway, and we didn't talk much. 
It was calm, but that didn't last because a few weeks later, she started harassing my social media for another chance. I was pretty exhausted by her at that point, so I just blocked her and had my kids block her as well. A lot of commenters pointed out in my second update that I didn't love her, I loved who I thought she was, and that was spot on. This realization helped the process of moving on go much more quickly. It's been radio silence from her end since my kids and I blocked her, and since it's been almost a year, I'm pretty confident it will stay that way. This whole situation has made me realize that I'm perfectly fine and okay with being single for the rest of my life. Maybe some people will see that as sad, but I find it more of an acceptance thing. Ending things with Amanda made me realize that I didn't feel the same love with her that I felt with Kayla, and probably never will with anyone else. That's not fair to me or the person I could potentially date, and I'm content with the family I have around me. This situation has given me a whole new appreciation for my kids. They showed more maturity and understanding than I ever did at their age, and it's made me love them even more, which I didn't think was possible, ha ha. Sam still has his apartment. I offered for him to move back in, but he declined as he really enjoys having his own bachelor pad, which I understand, as I was his age once too. He has a part-time job he really enjoys, which he's been working at since his second semester this year, and I think he met a girl. I'm not sure, but I know my kid, and I'm catching a vibe from him. Liz is amazing as always and is enjoying summer before her senior year. She's made on her role every year of high school, including this year, and I'm so damn proud. Both of my kids are such hard-working and genuinely good people that it's hard not to toot my own horn when I think about it, so I'm sorry for rambling about them. Anyway, that's about it for now. Again, I appreciate all of you fine Redditors for following how my kids and I are doing, and I hope this is a satisfying update for you. I wish you all the best.